Luke chapter 21, where Jesus speaks about these things uh, in Luke's gospel. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by enemy armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart. Let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant, those who are nursing babies in those days. There will be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There you've got the phrase, the times of the Gentiles. It goes on in the next verse to say there will be signs in the sun, in the moon and in the stars and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts fading them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man, <coughs> then, the, then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Okay, brief run through of that passage. Begins with the siege of Jerusalem, uh, speaking of desolation coming, uh, which corresponds to the event of AD 70, when the Jews rebelled against the Romans. The Romans then sent the armies in, besieged Jerusalem, and destroyed Jerusalem, uh, taking down the temple and the city, leaving not one stone standing upon another in the holy place. Uh, the fall of the temple in AD 70 was a great catastrophe for Israel, for the Jewish people, and it led to the beginning of the dispersion of the Jewish people to the nations, which Jesus also speaks about in this passage. And he says that Jerusalem is going to be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Uh, trodden down or trampled upon or ruled by the Gentiles. In other words, Jerusalem is now going to be ruled by different Gentile powers until this event. And this event is going to come which will change the situation. Uh, one of the things you notice, actually, when you look at the prophecies in the New Testament, that little word, until, comes several times at significant places. So this situation is going to continue until something happens to change it. Uh, history tells us that the Romans destroyed the temple. Uh, the Romans actually gave way, eventually, to the Byzantine Empire, to the Parthians, to different Muslim powers, uh, uh, the Crusaders in the 11th century followed by another Muslim power which took over, followed by the Turks, which took over from the 1517 to 1917, followed by the British, who took over from 1917 through to 1948. So you had different Gentile powers ruling over Jerusalem until the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, which led to the partition of Jerusalem, which would be in the west side, part of Israel, and in the east side, which is the old city of Jerusalem, where all the holy places are, part of Jordan, which uh, ruled over it from 1948 to 1967. Jerusalem trodden down of the Gentiles. 1967, something significant happened, which we'll talk about a bit more later, uh, the Six-Day War, in which Jerusalem returned to Jewish control uh, at the moment. That's not a, uh, a total situation, as I shall show you in a moment. Uh, going on, Jesus says, at this time, they're going to see the distress of nations in perplexity. Uh, that means there's going to be a global crisis with no way out at this time. In other words, there's going to be something happening in the world which will cause the world to be in some kind of distress, time of uh, shaking, if you like, in the sun and the moon and the stars, so cosmic effect of this also, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So at this time, at the end, you're going to see something taking place on the earth which is going to cause people to be afraid of what's coming on the earth uh, because they see this crisis coming uh, for which there is actually no human solution. And I think we can see actually that we're living in a time when there are many crises coming on the earth which none of our governments actually have a real lasting solution for. Uh, this will lead to the conditions of the Great Tribulation uh, which is uh, given in the Bible for the last seven years before Jesus returns. That will reach its climax with the second coming of Jesus to the earth, coming this time in power and glory, coming to the earth after the Great Tribulation period. And when these things begin to happen, Jesus says, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. So when you see things beginning to happen, it's a sign that Jesus is going to come back. 
And I would say that we do see these things beginning to happen, so we should be actually looking for the second coming of Jesus the Messiah. Uh, and the conclusion is that the end of the times of the Gentiles corresponds to the climax of this age and the physical return of Jesus the Messiah. Okay, so hopefully you're following me so far. I've got a lot of information here. I'm not sure I'm going to get through it all, but we'll see how we do. We can always do it next week. Okay, so what does it mean, going back to the fullness of the Gentiles, the full number of the Gentiles? What does it mean, and where do they come into? It says the fullness of the Gentiles will come in. Uh, if you read through the book of Acts, you see that there is a progression. Uh, Jesus says the gospel is going to be preached in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. First ten chapters of Acts, uh, first nine chapters of Acts, basically all the action is with Jewish people. From chapter 10 onwards, Gentiles begun to come in with the conversion of Cornelius. Then you have Apostle Paul coming to faith, going out to preach the gospel, and bringing more and more Gentiles into the Christian faith. Book of Acts chapter 15, they have a discussion on what to do with the Gentiles. Uh, do they have to convert to Judaism, or do they just repent and believe the gospel, take on certain laws from the Jewish uh, law, but they don't have to keep all of the commandments of Moses? They decide that they do have to not have to keep all the commandments of Moses, but they have to repent, believe the gospel. <clears throat> and James makes this statement that God has visited the Gentiles to take out a people, take out of them a people for his name. Uh, so this was actually something which was unexpected, if you like, that God was going to move amongst the Gentiles to bring a people by, of his name uh, into what became the Christian church. Uh, <clears throat> now, Romans chapter 9 to 11, uh, which Trevor's been looking at in the last few weeks, uh, speaks about Paul taking salvation, Paul's talking about salvation coming through Jesus, which is available to all who repent and believe the gospel, whether they're Jewish or Gentile, all can come into faith in Jesus. Uh, so the church is going to be made up of Jews and Gentiles who believe in Jesus the Messiah. Now he goes on to show in Romans 11 that the majority of Jewish people have not come into it, although some have himself included. And because there are more Gentiles than Jews, and because large numbers of Jews are not accepting Jesus, inevitably what's going to happen is that the church will become more Gentile than Jewish. Kind of logical, isn't it? So as the church spreads throughout the world, you have far more Gentiles who will come to faith than Jewish people. And today we could say that the church is majority Gentile with a small remnant of Jews who believe in Jesus. And we praise God for those Jews who do believe in Jesus. And we want all Jewish people to believe in Jesus. But we see that it is not the majority of Jewish people who believe in Jesus. It's also not the majority of Gentiles who believe in Jesus. But by sheer strength of numbers, there are more Gentiles than Jews in the church. Now, the implication of this scripture is that after the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, then God is going to do something amongst the Jews. There'll be a significant number of Jews who will come in. So in other words, God is going to turn then to the Jews and bring in large numbers of Jews. And the end will actually be what Jewish people were expecting the first time when Messiah came, the national salvation of Israel, with the Messiah reigning from Jerusalem and Israel becoming the center of the earth and all Israel being saved. So, <clears throat> let's move on. Is there any event in the end time scenario which shows that the full number of Gentiles has come in? This is an interesting question. Uh, nobody knows how many Gentiles, or indeed how many Jews there are, in the, who believe in Jesus. If you take it from the beginning of the church age, it's impossible for us to know. Uh, nobody knows apart from God. And it seems that God sees a certain time when he sees enough Gentiles have come in that he's going to change the situation and bring about something which will be a new thing. God will do something new to show this has happened, and then he will turn to the Jewish people. Now, here's where it gets a bit controversial, because I know some people don't believe that there is a pre-tribulation rapture, but I believe there is. And I believe that what actually happens to change this situation is the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. So that when God moves in, he says, there's enough Gentiles now, there's enough Jews, uh, who've believed in Jesus, I'm going to take these people supernaturally out of the world, then they'll begin the time of the great tribulation in which I'll begin to deal in a specific way with the Jewish people. Uh, 
famous scripture in 1 Thessalonians, it says, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Uh, that scripture is what's called the rapture of the church. It says that some, at some point in time, God is going to supernaturally take all those who have repented and believed the gospel, who have the Holy Spirit in them, to be taken out of this world to meet the Lord as he comes in the air. It's an entirely supernatural event. We can't make it happen, but God can make it happen because God's able to do everything. Uh, and He would t uh, at this point, all those who believe in Jesus will be taken supernaturally to be with the Lord. Uh, it says that we don't know the day or the hour, so we can't tell when this is going to happen. So one of the implications is we should be ready for it to happen at any time. Be ready for the coming of the Lord. Now, the bit which is controversial is that if he's taken out of the world before the tribulation, then there is a time of seven years, which is the tribulation, during which time God is dealing with those who remain, uh, which will bring God to move in a new way, in a way amongst Israel, his Jewish people. Uh, they will be saved in large numbers, and also they will bring numbers of Gentiles who will be saved during the tribulation period. And the, he will deal with the remaining Jewish population on the earth, revealed to a significant number of them that Yeshua is the Messiah, which will climb, climax in the national salvation of Israel. 